Hello and welcome to tutorial 188 and in this video I want to explain how the program works. You can see the program is applied to a chart at the moment but let me just demonstrate. I'm just going to refresh the screen to get rid of it. Then I'm going to go to drawing, rectangle and I'm going to select between a couple of bars. You'll notice that those bars were changed to a golden color and then we have a histogram drawn which represents the, the volume profile of the data within those bars. And what the program does is it uses a PSP and that PSP could either be a PSP using tick data or second data. So anyway, let me go into the program and try and explain it in more detail. Uh, I've set up the infinite loop detect to be false because this program can do a lot of processing or does do a lot of processing. As you can imagine, if we're using tick data within the bars, then we can very quickly get into hundreds of thousands or millions of items of data. The, uh, the inputs we've looked at in a separate video. And the first thing we're going to look at is how we convert between a date time point and a bar number and that is towards the end of the program and what I've done is set up a variable called bstat we store bstat at the end of the program so it's in other words at the end of the program equals bar status one which is if the uh, bar status one is equal to two then it's the last tick of the bar so consequently if bstat is equal to two it's the first tick of the bar we check that the uh, the dictionary, a dictionary called DICT. If an item for a particular bar, bar date time change to a string is equal to null, then what we do is we add to the dictionary a bar date time string and the bar number. In that way, we can see whatever the bar date time is, what the equivalent bar number is, and we use that within the program. So the next thing we do when we, uh, in creating the rectangle, is we need to detect when we've clicked the chart. So I'm just going to go back up the program and we find this here. And this is using the charting host. Now, what I've done in creating the program, I've used the toolbox and the component tray to create many of these, uh, these items like the charting host. Well, let me just quickly show you. So for example, the charting host, that puts an item here in the component tray. We can then go into the charting host and we can see, for example, chart element uh, click, um, which is the one we're using, or there's various other ones. And if you were to double click there, then you would set up a new thing in the program, just as we have here, the method void charting host, uh, chart element click. I'm not gonna do that just for, for time. And also if you were to go to the designer generator code, you would then see the code that you would need to ultimately copy into the program. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to actually delete this so we don't get in trouble. But that's uh, that's what the way that this was created. We are interested if the click is because we clicked on a drawing object, then we need to know what type of drawing object it is. And we can do that using this code here. So essentially we're saying that there is a rectangle and then we're putting the data into a vector which we've uh, we've set up in the variables if we look there vector vect we can take the value store the, the current the vector that's just been drawn into a rectangle or an object called rect r e c t that is our rectangle having done that we store the current bar number and then using the rect we're able to get the start bar and the end bar now this is where we're using the dictionary that we just created we can find the date time point of the rect using rect dot start point as time dt point then from that we can find out the date time of the bar as string that information then goes into the items and that will spit out the bar number from this dictionary that we've just created and we do the same for the end bar so we're using rect.endpoint having done that we can now go and plot using the paint bar the golden bars that we just saw a few moments ago and that is done using this code here making sure that we go between the correct 
uh, bar numbers. And the other thing that we do is we draw the lines at the top and the bottom of the range, which is a little bit more difficult to see. Well, let's actually just clear that and just uh, draw another one, a uh, rectangle. Okay, you can see the lines. You can see if you look very carefully, there's a green line at the top of the range here and a red line at the bottom. So that is what we're doing in this part of the program here, using the trend line create. Finally, at the end of this, we call the create PSP method and we enable a timer, more about the timer later. So let's have a look at the create PSP. And again, this is, uh, you can ease the ability to do this using the toolbox, but we've made a few little changes here based on some of our inputs. I've said if it is not null, if there is already PSP, then we need to close the PSP using dot close provider. And then we go through and create a new price series provider. And you can see that we, if we're using ticks, then we have an interval type of ticks. Otherwise, if we're using SECS seconds, then we have an interval type of seconds. Interval span is set to int span, which again is an input. Then we have the, uh, the first date and the last date, this time as a date time rather than bar number. Then we use ticks or vol. If it's uh, equal to one, then we use uh, volume info. If it's equal to zero, then we use the ticks info. We don't want this to be real time. Then we can also detect whether the chart is exchange time or local time. And then importantly, we set up a state changed event. And this we use to tell us when the PSP has been loaded. So we go down and we will see the state changed event here. Now I've set up another variable called load status and we use that with the timer. So just bear that in mind and that is equal to the, the args.new state of the PSP. But when the new state is loaded, then we enable, set timer.enable to false. Uh, we count the PSP and then we need to start analyzing the PSP. Now, as I mentioned, bear in mind, because we're doing this at a tick or a second level, we're talking about a lot of data. I uh, worked out a way of working out the equivalent bar with the bar in the price series provider. And that is what we're doing in this section here. So what I've done is created another video, which I'm just going to include here, which explains a little bit how I did that. So I want you to imagine a rectangle containing a very small number of bars. Let's just say two bars, the ones on the right. Now, of course, in reality, if we use a PSP or a tick, a multiple tick PSP, there are in reality a number of tick bars within these larger bars. And of course, the number of tick, uh, tick bars is not necessarily going to be the same for each bar. In fact, you can see in this case that there are considerably more bars between the first and the second on the chart and between the, the last bar and the previous bar. Now, if we number these and uh, looking at this historically, we're going to number them backwards and we're going to number the large bars, the real bars, the bars on the chart using bar number counter, one, two, three. Now, as far as the PSP bars, we can number them using CTR or counter. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Now, in order to speed up how quickly we go through the PSP bars, it's good to know exactly which PSP bars we're talking about. In order to do that, what we do in this program is we have a dictionary called PSP dict and we store into that using dot add a key and a value. And the key we're going to use is the bar number counter. In other words, the counter for the big bars and the other one, CTR, is the one for the PSP. So you can see for large bar one, we've got value one for the PSP. Large bar two, we've got value seven. And then if we analyzed the third bar, we can do that value 19. So having done that analysis, then we need to create the price volume dictionary. First of all, we clear it in case one has been set up before. And then we go through the items in the PSP uh, and analyze 
the price. Now, if there is currently a price in the dictionary, then we can add to that the PSP volume or the PSP ticks, depending on our, uh, the value of ticks or vol. If there is not currently that specific price stored in the volume dictionary, then we add it to the dictionary. So we go through all the items between the two bars in the on the chart using the PSP and do the analysis. And then having done that, we want to um, draw the trend lines on the chart to represent the volume profile. And that is what we're doing here. Oh, and incidentally, the first thing we do is we work out the highest effect, the highest value of the volume, calling the highest effect, which is another method. And let's just see if we can quickly find that. Okay, so highest effect. So what this does, does it goes through all the values in the, uh, the vector and finds out which one is the, uh, the highest. In fact, it finds the highest volume and the uh, highest volume price. And we need to know the highest volume because that we assign a number of bars, which is one of the inputs. And then all the other volumes are uh, adjusted to be the equivalent um, fraction of that highest value. We also use a gradient color to change the colors between the two. And uh, that has to, uh, because that expects a regular trade station color, we have to convert between the uh, the regular color and the uh, the color that we use in color objects or the color class. So that is the, the way the program works. Now we didn't mention the timer and what we do, what I discovered was that what sometimes happened is you, I would draw a rectangle and the analysis would occur. Other times I would draw the rectangle and the PSP would never load. So what I did was I created a timer and that checks for the load status, which is something that we, uh, we set up or we uh, set equal to the load status in the state changed event. So load status equals args.newState. Um, so it checks for that. And if after a, an elapsed time that has not changed, then we call create PSP another time. And that, that seems, to, uh, seems to work. We have our one statement. This is where we uh, set up the charting host, the uh, charting host chart element click event. The name we also set up at the timer here and I've hard coded the uh, interval in milliseconds so that would be 10 seconds and um, we're instantiating various dictionaries and vectors we're removing all drawing objects from the chart when we first apply this we're converting color classes to legacy colors I just mentioned that so anyway if you are interested in this it is available for download and if you're interested in more stuff like this then please go to markplex.com and join the email list and of course subscribe to wherever you're watching this video whether that be youtube rumble or daily motion so thank you very much